Well, hello everybody and welcome to this week's art lesson. Um, this week our art lesson is based on fish and we're looking particularly at the artwork of César Manrique. He was a Spanish artist born in Lanzarote, a painter, a sculptor, an architect, and he designed these fish particularly for tiles um, and uh, they're quite geometric and really good to look at for pattern and uh, they influence this week's art lesson. So what are we doing this week? Well, we're going to be creating our own fish in black and white based on our names. So to begin with, you need to take a piece of cartridge paper and I would suggest you look at a range of different types of fish, different shapes, and um, think about the shape of fish that you want to draw. Draw it in pencil first of all, just the outline, don't fill it in, just make sure it's just completely blank. And then in the middle, you're then going to, with your pencil, you're going to do the letters of your name. And you can see here that I have made sure that the name, each letter goes from the top of the fish right down to the bottom of the fish. So it is following the shape and the contours of the inside of the fish. Once you've plotted it out in pencil, making sure that you've managed to fit all your letters in, you might need to rub them out to, to fit it in, um, then go over it with a black pen. Um, once you've gone over all of the lettering, you will have a fish something like this. So this is my other son, Robert, um, and I have done the lettering. So the next thing you do is to fill in between the spaces. You're not filling in the actual um, letters. You're keeping them blank and the spaces will mean that the letters stand out a lot more if the spaces are filled with your black and white patterns. So the kind of patterns that I have done, I've done stripes, and spots, wiggly lines, curves, triangles, um, zigzag patterns. I've done pattern within pattern. I've done some big and some small. Um, and you start off, you can see here on Roberts that I have done some stripes and then I'm starting to colour those in black alternate. Um, I've started with some zigzags, I've started with a few little circles and then you continue with those filling in the spaces. Um, you can do circles within circles and you just keep on going until you have filled up all of the spaces and it does take time in order to do that. Once you've finished that you then need to cut out your fish. Don't cut out really, really close to the line. What you need to do is, is just leave a little gap and then cut around your fish, just a few millimetres so that it'll stand out better. And then you're going to put it onto your background. Now for your background, you can either, this is a, a blue painted piece of card uh, with a uh, squeezy paint or acrylic paint. Um, these colours are quite nice as well, your aqua colours, your greeny colours uh, and a nice lilac colour is also quite nice as well for a background for your fish. So these are the colours I have used um, on cartridge paper or on card, whatever you have to hand. Then, before you stick your um, fish on, you need to create these papers. Uh, but before I move on to that, I can also mention that if you don't want to stick your fish on a plain background, you might want to have a patterned background. So there's two different kinds that I've done. One is oil pastel with um, a brusho wash. And the other one is candle wax with a brush o wash. So the candle wax is just um, a paraffin candle. You do your wiggly lines and then with your brush o wash, this is your brush o, it's watercolour powder, 
We use it a lot in school. You sprinkle a little bit into a jam jar, add some water, and then that will create a wash. And you're basically doing a wax resist by um, putting the wash over your candle waxing. The only thing I would say, press hard with your candle wax um, and it'll wax resist a lot better. So that's a nice background on which to stick your um, fish onto. So you could do that with that prepared background. Likewise with the um, pastelling one, select your colours, watery colours I suggest. You could either go down with your wiggly lines or go across and again paint on with your wash over the surface and you will get a nice wax resist. Oil pastels, just to remind you, you all know what oil pastels are like, we used those a few weeks ago. Um, so moving on to the papers that you can use, um, I've thought of a few different papers that you can colour. Um, bubble wrap, printing, brusho paper, and stencil printed paper. So I was just going to do a very quick demonstration on how to do your bubble wrap printing. You just take a piece of paper and your bubble wrap. Got quite a lot of this at the moment. I'm sure quite a few do do at home with lots of parcels arriving from deliveries. Make sure you paint not on the smooth side, but on the bubbly side. And um, make sure you use a range of the colours here from your palette. You don't have to just put one colour on. You can put one colour on top of another colour. Um, and so you get these nice, if you can see there, a mixture of colours being built up in order to print your surface. So once you've covered the whole of that, you would then lay it onto your paper, you would press and then lift and you get your bubble wrap print and obviously you then cover the whole of your sheet until you have that. And then that would then dry and be ready to use on your fish. The other one that I'm going to demonstrate to you is doing the bubble, is doing the brusho. And for this, uh, many of you have done this before, but just as a reminder, for those of you who are not sure how to do it, you have your piece of paper, you get yourself your wash that you've made by putting a little bit of the powder in, the brusho powder, tiny bit goes a very very long way and you put that over your sheet by using a big brush you're keeping it nice and wet once it's covered then you can take your pots of brusho this is the brusho that we'll use I stab the tops of the plastic pots and then you can use them like you would salt and pepper and sprinkle them over the wet surface. Make sure you don't go into the same spot. And then what happens is the uh, water helps it to swirl around. You can get a spray of water and spray as well and that activates some of the wetter uh, powdery bits. It's very wet there. What I sometimes do is I put a piece of paper over the top just to absorb some of that moisture and then by doing that it helps dry it off and you get quite nice prints from it as well that you can also use. 
I keep my papers when they're dry. I tend to store them so that you've got them to bring out at another time when you've got another art activity. You don't have to necessarily start from the beginning with colouring your papers. So that is Brusho. Very, very handy. Very, very versatile. So once you've got your papers, the other one is the, um, the stenciling one, which is where you have a piece of paper, you take some of this grid, which we got in school, you lay it over your paper and with your thicker paints, your acrylics or your mixed ready mix, you're just blobbing over the surface and when you lift it away, you get your your print so that is an effective paper as well so that's a stencil effect so then once you've got your dried papers you can then take a pair of scissors and cut some nice wiggly uh, water weeds seaweeds reeds now don't stick them right over your name if you can put some at the bottom, some perhaps going over the tail, some just perhaps touching the fins, and then you can have some looking like they're behind. So just tuck them underneath uh, before you glue down. And then you have got your finished painting. Okay, so it's now your turn to go and create and don't forget to show your work on Padlet I really love to see what artwork you're doing uh, at school and at home as well so enjoy bye bye